So negative 7 thirds x is less than or equal to 3. Now we need to cancel out this negative 7 thirds. So we want to have 1x. How do we cancel out the negative 7 thirds? By dividing negative 7 thirds on each side. by negative 7 thirds, which is the same as multiplying by negative 3 sevenths. Multiply by the reciprocal. Okay. Uh, so we multiply by negative 3 sevenths on the left side and multiply by negative 3 sevenths on the right side. On the right side we get, so we get uh, negative 9 sevenths. Seven for both sides. Negative five eighths x greater than or equal to fifteen. How do we cancel the negative five eighths? Multiply by the reciprocal. Multiply by the reciprocal. Flip because we multiplied by a negative. in our homework or
be like, if you do two negative things, which is the same as doing two positive, try to help. And if I went up to one of the five, you the same line as what I just did. Whether we go down four and right five, or up four and left five, Why I accept though? There we go. Very good. All right, you get a break. Whew. You get to tell us when to take one. Let me just kind of fill this out a little bit more. <laughs> just because, you know, just the full scope of the window that we have going here. Shading all the way down here. Okay. Uh, now, aside from saying this is basically the steps that you follow, put a point there, and then this is the slope, and then shade this side. Can you explain a little more why, you know, not why we shade the side that we do, like an actual explanation? Because it's the numbers that are less than that. Good. What is less than? Specifically what? When you plug in an X. So if I plug in this X and Y, let's say that that's at uh, negative 5, 6. What'd you say would happen? It'd be equal. What would be equal? That, no. Both sides, yes, exactly. That's what this line is. This line, this line is made of what? Solutions. Every point represents? Solution. Solution. Equation. Solution of the equation. On the line, solution to the equation. Yeah. Off the line, well, not a solution to the equation, right? Yeah. Because the points on the line represent all the points that when I plug them in, both sides are equal. And is that all right? Yeah. Why is that? Why do I know that it's okay for both sides to be equal? Yeah. There's that little line right there that means or equal to. So that is great. So any point that I pick on the line will make both sides equal. That's good. I want to include those points that are on the line so I make a solid line. I also want to include points where the y value is less than the y value that's on the line. So, like for instance, this one, the y values that are less than six are down here. The y values that are less than the y value of this point are down here. If I take this point, all the values that have a y that is less than this y value are down here. Okay, make sure just to display this to you. If I plug negative five and six into here for x and y, six for x, sorry, six for y, five for x, negative five. Six less than or equal to the cancels, so they just say positive four plus two. Hopefully, we're not surprised by that. Like that's what we were expecting, because that's what points on the line represent. They represent an x and a y that, when plugged into this thing here, will make both sides equal. And since that's cool, we include those points, and we include all of the points where y has a value that's less. Right? Like negative five comma five or negative five comma four, negative five comma three, and so on. And it, for every point that's on the line, any point below that will have a y value that's less. Why might I see this? Oh, I got you. Yes, Aiden. Because uh, everything like on the line, it's not what it could be. It's what it is. So, like, it's not with it. so, like, what would be different about the the original problem for that? To, to, like, for me to get a dotted line. I don't know. Really? Right there. Okay, so it's not 
There's not the equals to, right? Oh, oh dare you. <laughs> Makes sense. On, on the line, both sides are equal. Off the line, both sides are not equal. So if I don't want both sides to be equal, which now that is the case, if I don't want the both sides to be equal, then I want to not include the points that are on the line. Because that's what the points on the line do. They make both sides equal. Okay, good. Uh, this one, just did this one. Who wants to get the second break? Oh, wait, no, no. I got something. Uh, you need to flip the sign. Flip the sign. Oh, yeah, flip the sign, that's what I got. I think I have not done that. You got both of them, right? She was, oh, where'd she go? She was with you? She was doing some pantry. I did it on my paper. Oh, you forgot it up here. That's right, a lot of pressure up here. Dude, I am surprised that I got both of those correct. Well done. I had that. I'm surprised I got both of those. <laughs> so, why is that? Why did it get flipped around? Damn, I got you. Because you had to do the reciprocal thing and flip all of the thingy. Not because of the reciprocal. Well, you had to like flip the things and then you moved it over. So you gotta no, no. flip that thingy no. over. No. It's okay, you can divide by a Divide or multiply by a negative on both sides. That's what I meant. That's what I meant. <laughs> Everybody knows it's true. Remember to flip the right, you multiply by a negative, not because of a reciprocal. If it was a positive fraction, we multiply by the positive reciprocal. No flipping, no flipping of the sign. Okay, great. Now, onward. We will have some copies soon. Okay. If it was last year, I would have delivered those to you yesterday. Because I was going to run guy and deliver those. Weird sentence. Last year? Yeah, last year. Oh, yeah, we are all over. All right, throw it out of the park. so we have solved some inequality. Now we're going to solve some inequalities with a couple more steps in there, really. Right. Sounds good. Let's distribute that five. All right. Hey, Aiden? Last point A. Sounds good. Point A. One. Ashley? Thank you so much. Yeah. You want to one? Let me in this class. Yeah. Uh, are those mine? <laughs> no, those, are, those are for another class. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, those are tests. Hey, you, you want the test? Yeah. It's, uh, oh, yeah. I want to try it. You want to take a test? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I think I can do it. Okay. No. Think about what you're about to do. Okay, once you get yours, do I do number one? Distribute the negative 2. Okay, 
Okay. Then you would do plus eight plus nine. Okay. And then you divide by two. All right. And you shall be going. Shall get what? X. X equals equal minus Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's that now? Is that wrong? Yes. Okay, you have to switch the switch the inequality sign. Oh, I always forget. I totally just do that on my board. No. What do you do? Oh my god. Oh, oh, negative. Divide by, by two. or multiply by negative, negative on both sides. sides. Okay. Would you like a re-explanation of why that is? Number two is for you. You can do whatever you want. Okay? I am going to push you so far as to attempt something that is slightly different than what you have seen, but that you can fully capable of doing it. I'm sure I have every confidence in you. So, you can do it. Now wait, you, hold on. If you feel like you just can't even try, you'll just have to wait until next class, okay? But it's totally something you can do. You have every bit of knowledge you need. Let me just go back here and show you an alternate way. At the very start, let me point this out first. See how you've multiplied x by negative 2? Yeah. yeah. You distributed it. Da, 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 da. What did you do then? You, you divided by negative 2. Like you did the thing and then you undid the thing that you did. Yeah. How about at the beginning, I just divide by negative 2 to start with? Uh, we've done this before. Mm -hmm. Divide by negative 2. So I'm going to have to flip this around, but I'll have x plus 4 is greater than or equal to a negative 8. And then subtract 4. Mm -hmm. Same thing, of course. Oh, okay. Different answers, that'd be crazy. Wait, hold on. Yes? It says plus four. Oh, wait, I got you. Never mind. Oh, I got okay. you. You do minus four. I, I, I had a brain sides. part. I you know. <laughs> There's the real one I taught myself. All right. This is not, it's different. I know. Okay, I want you to push yourself in and don't think like, oh, oh, I haven't been shown exactly how to do something exactly like this exactly, so I don't know how to do it. That's ridiculous. Okay? If you if you have driven a a, a, a car, yeah. you think you could give driving a truck a try? Yeah. yeah. Probably you can no. handle it. It'll be different. It'll be new. It'll be a little bit weird. You'll be sitting higher. you have a wider turning radius. Like you have to adjust to things. I tell you, like, you be a little higher. Yeah, you get your blades. Things will be different, but also things will be similar. Like turning the wheel a little, you know, anti clockwise will turn you left. And turning it clockwise will turn you right. Like things will be the same. Things will also be different. Things are the same. Here, there's some distribution we could do. That's that's the same. If you divide by a negative on both sides, that will be the same. Okay, give it a try. If you're still hopelessly lost, which you shouldn't be, you have the capability. We can talk about it next class. Okay, same thing here. Oh wait, we're not doing two right now. Yeah, I'll do two. Go ahead and do two if you want, but I'm gonna jump over here. Okay, here we have something called compound inequalities. Let's take a look at this thing that, I, that has been said here. X needs to be. First, let's, let's take an attempt at writing down what it's saying. I'm higher. Nine? Nine? Is less than or greater to. And or what? Eight equal to four equal to x. X. And x is less and than. And I like that word. And x is less than. Is less. Is is wait, wait, less than fifteen. Fifteen. What is that word and? That's that's pretty important. It might not seem that important. Mm -hmm. But to say something is something and something else uh, means that it can be two things at once. Yeah. Right? I am a husband and a father. 
<laughs> but I can't be son. I can't be a, a husband and a single guy. I can be one or the other. Bachelor. Yeah, I can be a husband and a bachelor. I can't be one or the other. I can be, sometimes I can be two things at once. And in this case, X can be two things at once. Wait. X is smaller than nine, but greater than 15. I'm the daddy and the mommy. Okay. So, let's call it zero. No, zero is a little, let's put it to the, further to the left, because we're working with nine and 15. So let's put seven and zero over here. So what is a number that X can be? Either between nine. No, I'd give me a specific example to start with. Ten. 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 It can be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten. X can be ten. What else could X be? Eleven. Nine. Both. It could 14. be nine. It could be eleven. Oh, that's true. That's true. Or eight. Fourteen. 14. So eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Take that on. Fourteen. And these numbers. What else? Twelve. 13. Got 12, got 13. 14. Got 14. Can't be 15. Could it be 15 itself? 14. Could it be 15 itself? No, no. no. it's greater than. Because there's no little equals to, so no. 14.99. Uh, 14.99. So here's 15. So 14.999. And all the ones um, in between. And all the ones 10, in between. All these guys. Could be 10. 10.00000. 10. 10. 10. 10. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. 10.000. 0, 0, 0, 0. 1 is the zeros can go on there. 1 is. So here, I've, I, I have taken the time to grab all of those points. Right? Yeah. Now, if I really just grabbed all those points, it sure would be hard to tell that x cannot be 15. Mm -hmm. How do I show that it cannot be 15? Color it. Open a circle. Open that tells circle. me that, uh, that I can go too close to 15, as close to 15 as I want. 14.9 forever, but, well, not 9 forever. Just but any finite number of 9s can come after 14. 14.9, 14 any finite number of 9s. X can be that. You know that if X were equal to 14.99, like, you know what this means? Repeating. Repeating, like forever. Now, could you ever write this number down without this little bar here? No, it would take no, 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 because it's it. never ready. It's never ready. Keep that in mind when oh. I tell you that. Good movie. Tell you that x if x were equal to 14 point and an infinite number of nines, that would be 15. Oh. Okay. <laughs> infinite number of nines. Right. Not. A lot of nines, not a billion nines, not a trillion nines, not a quadrillion nines, but, but an infinite number of nines. Numbers. Not something you can actually write down, because we'd never have enough time in uh, a million lifetimes to write that down, write down that many nines. But an actual infinite number of nines, point nine 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 nine, that is one. So fourteen point an infinite number of nines is fifteen and one, so that's fifteen. Fourteen okay. and one, that makes sense. Can't be 14.9 repeating forever, but it can be 14. Point any finite number of times. Okay. Well, now we have graphed a compound inequality. We've shown what x can be, and it can clearly be between these two numbers, right? So if I choose this to be x, it's both of the things that it's supposed to be at the same time. It's bigger than nine, and it's less than 15. And okay, why don't you graph number five for me? What's that scribble made of? Trillions and trillions of trillions. That's right, thank you, Nick. <laughs> That's how we're done. Gold star, how can you continue? Each point represents a solution to this compound inequality. Any number I pick from inside of this uh, lots of points region will be both of those things. If I put zero there, it'll be bigger than negative five and smaller than three. If I put one in there, likewise, it'll be true. All right. Now, uh, this looks a little different than that, right? Like it's not in between two numbers. And the reason is because if you read it, x is not between two numbers. Okay, what's this say? x is greater, x is less than. Oh, I thought I heard somebody say x is greater. x is less than 
33, x is greater, or x is greater than 9. Can x be, can I replace this with and? Yeah. No. Tell me a number that's less than three. Two. Okay, is two also and is two x, is, is it greater than nine? No. No. No, so it can't be and. It's physically impossible. That's what I was saying. When you say and, you mean both at the same time. Yep. Can it be bigger than 10 and smaller than 15? Yep. Yeah. Can it be bigger than negative 5 and smaller than 3? Yeah. No. Can it be smaller than 3 and bigger than 9? No. No, it can be one or the other at any given moment, but it can't be both at the same time. So clearly we have, uh, let's say, 0, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I think it's really standard. Okay, so what's this part look like on the graph? Uh, I said so x could be 2. Yeah. Oh, I got you. To the left. Oh. Open circle on 3. Open circle on 3 because it cannot be 3, but it could be uh, 2.5, 2.9, anything in, in bigger than 2, smaller than 2, between 1 and 2, 0 to 1. All of these points all work. What does this part look like? Circle on nine. Shade to the right. You see how x cannot, like I can't pick a point here that is also over here. It can't be both at the same time. It can be this or that. It can't be this and that. But this and works. It can be bigger than 10 and less than 15. Let's take a brief couple of moments and graph number seven. So, who wants to come up and finish this graph for me? Tyler. Oh, man. The bullet brings my arm. Alright, so this guy can be equal to, so you gotta make a circle that's close. And you scribble in all these guys. And uh, this one is not equal to, so open circle. You scribble in all these guys. All these guys. You're gonna applaud to start applauding. Whoa, Jay. Whoa, it's alright. You calm down. Alright. Okay. Um, so, what we have here is something that looks like it needs to be solved, and that is the case. Uh, but it's in a compound inequality. Let's just make this easy. Cover up the, the three is less than or equal to part. What's that look like? Does it look like, uh, look like something we've done before? Yep. How about if I cover up the 36 part? Is yep. that something we've done before? That's cool. Okay. So this, that, like, this is just normal inequalities that we've solved before. Okay, so let's cover up the three. How would I solve for all of them? What? Minus nine. Minus nine? On both sides? Yeah. Okay, what if I didn't have the 36, I just had the 3? Uh, same thing. Same thing. I subtract 9, subtract 9. Okay. So I can do all this stuff at once, right? Right. On the, all three sides. Yep. Quote unquote, mockingly, air quotes. There's not three sides, there's really just two inequalities that we are able to solve at the same time because they're, they're just kind of conveniently written this way. But here we get negative 6 is less than or equal to 3r minus, or sorry, minus, less than or equal to 27. And what if we had just 3r is less than or equal to 27? Divide by 3. What if we just had negative 6 is less than or equal to 3? Divide by 3 on both sides in both of these inequalities. So, negative 6 divided by 3, negative 2, less than or equal to r, less than or equal to 9. That's pretty neat. That's pretty neat. I'm going to make sense, right?
right? Because if if this if this expression is going to be between three and thirty six, then R itself needs to be between negative two and nine. The reason we flip things around is oh, divide by a negative, which we didn't do. But if we did divide by a negative, then yes, we would flip around both of them. Uh, we just jumped to number 10. Maybe number 9 is a little too uh, All right. So first, first, what do we do first? Subtract 9. On all three sides. <laughs> Negative 15, less than 3n, less than 12, and then. Divide by 3 equals sad. Wait. Divide by 3, hold on, I gotta start the two minute timer. Oh, who did the noise? Okay, we got two minutes. What's next? Divide by three. Divide everything by three. three. So we get negative five. Less than ten. Less than four. Got it. Alright, let's work on this one. What would we do first? Distribute. Distribute the negative two. Add negative two. two. Add two. Add two. Oh. Add two. Add two. Add two. So negative six is less than negative two x is less than or equal to six. You want to divide by negative two. Divide by negative two. What's that? Yeah. If it, if we were just doing this one, if we cover up the this right side, we would have to flip this around, right? So that's how we would handle that one. Well, the same thing goes here. If this were the inequality that we were solving, we'd have to flip the sign around. So we just flip both of them around. Uh, so 3 needs to be greater than uh, positive x, which needs to be greater than or equal to negative 3. I'm liking it. That makes sense because imagine that the, we didn't flip the signs around, then 3 would have, or x would have to be bigger than positive 3. Let's think about bigger than positive 3. It would have to be over here. And it would have to be between positive 3 and, well, even saying between doesn't make any sense because it would have to be bigger than 3 and at the same time it would have to be less than negative 3 or equal to negative 3, right? That wouldn't make any sense. This is not a graph of this, of course. This is a graph of if we did not flip the signs around. Flipping the signs around maintains that x needs to be two things. Okay, break time. Okay, let me just get that fight. This might be a new thing to some of you. Or maybe all of you, I don't know. Have you ever seen this symbol before? Yes. 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 Straight vertical lines? Yeah, I forgot what symbol though. What does it mean? No. No, those are well, they are, well, they're not officially called brackets, but they are some kind of a bracket. Sort of. I don't remember seeing there. Doesn't it mean like absolute value? It's exactly what it means. Absolute value. Hashtag. Yeah. Yeah. Hashtag it was written at the top of the page. Yeah. Hashtag killed it. Okay? But absolute, it's called, it's, it's called absolute value. So I would read this. Yeah, let's read it. How's it read? Absolute. 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 X. Value. Of x is five. What does it mean, absolute value? I don't know. It means five. I guess. How much is worth? Exact. It's absolute. Like, dialed value. right in, hitting absolute. directly right it's on. It's not about it. precision. Yeah. <laughs> it's got to be positive. If it was negative, it's going to be positive. Okay. We're getting there. Ooh. It uh, it means the absolute value means the distance. From what do you think? From what? 
Zero. 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 Dif distance from zero. Mm -hmm. Examples. The absolute value of five, how far away from uh, uh, zero five. is five? Five away. Absolute value of negative five. Five. Is five. 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 It's five. It's still five away. Like, how big is its distance? Five halves. It's five. It's a five bigness. Five bigness. Okay. How big is the distance between the two? Okay. Uh, so, given these two examples. <laughs> uh, now, what, what you want to think about is, what could x be? X inside that absolute value sign, what could x be? Negative five. It could be either one. Or okay, what do we just do? What do we just find? The absolute value of five. Uh, no, the absolute value of five is five. No, the absolute value of x, to be technical, is 5. The absolute value of x is 5. What did we find? We found the value of 5. Of what? Of 5. The value of 5 is 5. Wait, no. We found x. We found what x could be. Nailed it. We found x. There it is. It could be that. It could be 5, or it could be negative 5. Okay? The stuff inside the absolute value could be 5, because when you take the absolute value of 5, you get 5. The sum inside the absolute value could be negative 5, because when you take the absolute value of negative 5, you get negative 5. So what could x be in number 14? Something that we said. Yes, okay, now, let's see if we're very clever. I'm going to let you try this next one, using what you know so far. We said the stuff inside the absolute value there that what's in here, like this could be seven, or this inside here could be seven. Are you allowed to take things out of the absolute value bars? No. Crap. Okay, Hayden, where, where'd your common sense get you? Um, I did x equals two. And then x plus 3 equals 5. x equals 2. Oh, so that's who we're doing. But 3. <laughs> You're thinking right, though. x is 2. X, then x is what? Uh, x, x is 2 plus 3. Then those no, x is, x is 2. Yeah. And then I split it up. x is 2. Yeah. X is what else could x be, Hayden? Can you not the else? Actually, negative 8, right? Negative 8. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. My yeah. mind just yeah. got blown yeah. into the next room the same way. Oh, oh my god. god. Discuss why x can be negative 8. I know, I know. No, discuss it. Don't tell me why. I already know. Okay, yeah, because negative no, 8. No, discuss not. Just like a little, little <laughs> bruise. Okay, so negative 8 plus 5. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> negative 8 plus. Oh my god. Yeah, negative 8 plus 5. Oh, wait. Okay, so now who can explain why x could be negative 8? So Tony. to be really good algebraists. Algebraists? And just set up equations. Oh, yeah. Here's one, here's one equation for, for number one, or 14. Here's one equation, here's the other equation. They were just really easy to solve. Here, once you set it up, it's solved. All right, now think about x, x plus three. Where do I see x plus three in this equation? Right there. Right there. It's inside the absolute value. Right? It's the guts of the absolute value. So this stuff inside the absolute value, whatever x is, it could come out to be what? Negative 8. Remember, I'm taking the absolute value of this. 
Yeah, yeah, equal to, mm -hmm. but. Uh, yes, like this stuff could be five. So we said, does inside stuff equal to five? Or this inside stuff could be, what could the inside of this be? So that when I take the absolute value, I still get five. Could be negative five. Could be negative five. So, what was that inside stuff? It was x plus three was the inside stuff. That could come out to be negative five. The inside stuff could come out to be five. The inside, inside the absolute value could come out to be negative five. And when we solve both of these equations, we get x is two, subtract three on both sides, x is negative eight. Ooh. Try number 16. Okay. Listen. We're going to take the absolute value of something and we're going to get 12. Okay, let's just forget about what all this looks like. What could the inside be? Those are the two possibilities. The inside, we got the absolute value could come out to be 12. So you can come out to be negative 12. So how do we figure out what x has to be? Well, 3x minus 4, four. four could be 12. Because this is the inside of the absolute value. The inside of the absolute value could come out to be 12. Or the inside of the absolute value could come out to be negative, negative 12. We have two equations. Pretty easy to solve. Add four to both sides. Divide by three. Add four to both sides. Wait. What? I asked if you could uh, take stuff out of the absolute value of ours. And you said that we couldn't. Let me show you what I thought you meant and why you can't do what I thought you meant. Okay, hold on. Uh, so I add four to both sides and I get negative eight and x equals negative eight thirds. Show you that that's true for sure. Okay, so let's plug, let's plug the second one back in to the original equation. Uh, we had three times plug in negative eight thirds minus four. It's three over one times negative eight over three. The threes can cancel. We have negative eight minus four. That's the absolute value of negative twelve. What's the absolute value of negative 12? 12. 12. 12, just like it's supposed to be. We figured out the number that we need to plug in for x that would cause the inside to be negative 12. We also figured out the number we had to plug in for x for the inside of the absolute value to come out to be positive 12. Let me show you, Hayden, what I was thinking you meant. And if I'm wrong, let me know. I thought you meant starting with this equation, 3x minus 4 equals 12, you get like you add four. Keep in mind, everyone, doing something you are not supposed to do. Three x, absolute value of three x equals 16. No, I did that. No, I'm not going to do that. Okay, now it is true that I did something very similar to that in this equation, all right, but by adding something from inside the absolute value, like, I, I've made this be equal to 16, only, only equal to 16. Okay. Like, these are definite the solutions that I should get. If I have added four to both sides, uh, then if I try to like solve this, I could say three x equals 16, or three x equals negative 16. And so x equals 16 thirds, or x equals negative 16 thirds. And that, that's, those are the solutions to this equation, but not to this equation. Mm -hmm. okay. So I pretty much just changed the equation if you did that. Yeah, because think about the absolute value. It's kind of an interesting function where it just always gives you like the negative version, or the positive version of the number that's inside there. And you can see how. Uh, Taking a number multiplied by three and then subtracting four and then taking the absolute value would be different from just taking a number times three and then just taking the absolute value then. And I'm supposed to do a lot of things before I take the absolute value. So if I just take something outside of the absolute value, I ignore that that was supposed to happen before I took the absolute value. 
So you can't do something to both sides of the equation and start messing around with stuff until you make these two equations. First, I have to say the inside of the absolute value could be 12, could be negative 12. Then I can start doing things both sides. If I do it before that, if I just start taking things outside of the absolute value, really messing things up. times the absolute value of 5x plus 4 equals 5 That's how you do it. This is what I made up just now. Oh, oh here we go. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going oh, together. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. What would you do first? Could you distribute? I cannot. Okay. Because <laughs> uh, think about it, this number might be a positive number, it might be a negative number. When you distribute the 2 into it, um, well, let's see, what does it change over here? Uh, I suppose you could actually, you know? Well, on every other problem, mm -hmm. can we distribute 2? Or just on this? You could. On every problem? On this one, on, if, if, if you want to know if you can distribute it to and your absolute value, yeah. That was too fast. Yeah, you could distribute the two. It's not going to make a difference. OK, distribute the two. Oh, that should be a 10. Mm -hmm. It could be a 7 or a negative 7. It could be a 7 or a negative 7. What could be a 7? Uh, 10x plus 8 and 10x plus 8. Okay, now we're set up to solve two equations. And we're done, we'll have the two solutions. And then now, can you minus 8 to both sides? Yes. Okay, I think I'm getting it now. ones I want you to try on your own. There's only a couple of problems. Again, remember what I said last time. Approach them with an attitude of, I'm going to understand why the answer that I get is the answer that I get. Okay? I'm going to understand why. Not just how to do it, not just get done, so that I can play trivia crack or whatever you're talking about over there. Uh, all right? Whatever the new app is. It's uh, okay. Mario, I think, right? Mario, Mario? question? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Mario question? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Take a break. Uh, and then.